She was very comfortable with the aeroplane, but not so comfortable with the cars. <laughs> That's a nice, a nice memory. He came to visit and we played around in the simulator. A good day, he's a good friend. It's wonderful we're going to be playing together this week. And he came and shared a little bit of my other crazy, crazy passion. <laughs> this one, we were on tour and we had to take a flight for a concert that evening. Um, and there was a technical problem with the aircraft. Everyone got on the plane, we waited for a while and they said no. We can't go. We found a small taxi who drove us to the one restaurant like 15 minutes away in the country. I mean, it really was the middle of nowhere. And we went and had the most wonderful lunch. We forgot about our worries. We took the next plane and had a lovely concert. <laughs> we were rehearsing the Don Giovanni. It was the first big production of the Mahler Chamber Orchestra. Um, I'd been Claudio's assistant in Berlin at the time. Claudio was with us for the performances in Aix-en-Provence the first time. Uh, absolutely magic thing and it was the first opera that Peter Brook had directed complete. He hadn't done that since a, a, a Salome in Covent Garden conducted by Thomas Beecham with sets designed by Salvador Dali. I mean it was an immensely historical moment. If I could have anything I would go back and do it all again with a little bit more awareness of what a wonderful experience it was. Is it Simon? Yeah, I think I've seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't changed, huh? The same, the same incredible awareness in the eyes. You learn everything from somebody and you're completely influenced by the way they walk and the way they talk and the things that... And then over time, you become your own person. It's normal. Oh, Simon is my, my conducting father <laughs> and a great friend. In Simon's picture, you see the power in his eyes, Peter Brook, it's another level. <laughs> he's a terrifying man. He cares for the people he works with, but when he's working, there's never this thing of, uh, of softening the thing to make sure you feel comfortable. It's all about, can we find what's really at the center of this thing? And you have to be quite strong to deal with that. I was 22 and it probably came as an experience too early in my life. Anybody you ask who, who were the great influences, you always hear his name. And for me to have spent the best part of a year with him when I was so young is, it's incomprehensible as a, as a gift. Ah, this is Abibi. <laughs> She's no, sadly no longer with us. She was very comfortable with the aeroplane, but not so comfortable with the cars. <laughs> there were two or three people who were like, you took your cat in the plane. <laughs> she used to love sitting on the, on the ferry seats or climbing in the window. But she, she's the kind of James Dean cat. She live fast, die young, you know. <laughs>